Hello, my name is M. Jason Graham, and this is In Under Five Minutes. In Under Five Minutes is brought to you by MJGStoryCreation.com. Go to MJGStoryCreation.com for helpful hints and forms. Get started on turning your idea into an epic story today. So, today I wanted to talk about how you get started on your outline. Typically, um, when we have a story in our heads, it doesn't come out fully formed, fully fleshed. It, it, it doesn't. And a lot of times we get very nervous because we realize very quickly that we only have part of the story. So I want to encourage you because writing the outline is really the first step to actually writing your script, whether it's a manuscript or a screenplay or a, a play, a stage play. So here are your, the three hints. First one is, start with the bookends. So bookends are kind of the snapshot of the story at the beginning or at the end. Kind of a picture of the world that gives the audience an idea about the world that they're coming into or the world that they're leaving. Typically, you'll have this idea, uh, and you'll also have snapshots throughout. When you look at my process, I actually have for, if you're doing a film, for instance, uh, there are eight bookends. So two bookends, beginning and ending for each act. If you can figure those out, then it gives you some place to start with the information that's in between those. The next thing would be... Start with the emotional changes. Now, this is a good one to start with, particularly if you have an idea of what kind of story that you want to tell. Your character needs to learn and grow, and so you have those scenes in your head which are growth scenes, which is to say something happens to the character, and then acknowledgement scenes, which is to say when the character begins to acknowledge the change they need to make and why. Uh, these are very important because characters have to grow and change during the course of the story. I know that it's not um, typical to say that about the antagonist or the antagonist characters, but uh, it really is important and adds to the wealth of your story. The final um, thing that you could start with would be key plot points. So, whereas when you're looking at emotional changes, you're kind of looking at the life of the character on the inside, key plot points uh, focus on the action of the story. So, if you know, for, for example, where the inciting incident is, or if you know, for example, how the story ends or where the confrontation happens between the protagonist and antagonist, those are all great places to write down because you can work in between and kind of work backward from and, and really figure it out. I would say, as far as emotional changes are concerned, you want to be careful that you're not doing a, a trope, which is to say you're doing something that looks like a scene from Romeo and Juliet, it can be similar to it and kind of a callback to it, but you don't want it to be the same. As far as the key plot points, you want to make sure that you have your guiding principles hammered in and figured out. Your, the purpose of telling the story, the theme, and what the audience is supposed to get from it, the message. Because you could go through and put in a bunch of key points and then go back to that and discover that these key points don't really help to tell, to give the message of the story. And so you have to end up changing them anyway. And trust me, you, you don't want to do that. My name is M. Jason Graham, and this has been In Under Five Minutes. In Under Five Minutes is brought to you by MJGStoryCreation.com. Go to MJGStoryCreation.com and get started on turning your idea into an epic story today. I'll see you next time.